Hey harmonizers, welcome to the session with King where we are going to do a bunch of stuff starting with side passing to different obstacles. We're going to take a look at starting to teach him flying lead changes over poles as well as doing his first jumps and trying to get that going a little bit better. So first off with this side passing towards jumps, we're doing this because this is a great skill to have for doing obstacle or trail, which is probably going to be what I end up competing him in maybe dressage we'll see because he definitely is a really good mover but in case we're going to do the trail competition he needs to be able to side pass two objects so that way i can touch them i can pick them up whether it's a rope gate or uh, picking up like a bucket who knows what they're going to ask us to do but i need to be able to get close enough to them that i can touch it and as you can see king is not super impressed that we need to get close to this. He's very capable of going sideways. It's just a matter of convincing him that it's okay to let me get close enough to touch. So I want you to notice how long that took to start with and how far away I am from that standard and then I give him a cookie. And this will kind of show just how fast positive reinforcement can work. I've sped up this footage here so you can see that I really didn't do that much more. And now he's at the point where see there's a pole here on the ground. Not only are we going to get close enough to the standard that I can touch it, but I'm going to side pass a pole on my way there and then be close enough that I can touch the standard. And I'm significantly closer than I was at the first standard that we first started that on. And that's really just the power of positive reinforcement and using food. A lot of people can be really against using food because you have to teach your horse manners as well. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can become a little bit grabby. Uh, but if you can teach your horse manners around food, you get to train them so much faster. And research has shown this time and time again. So that just kind of shows you how quickly he learned this skill. I sped up the footage so you could see it's not that I did a gazillion of these, um, you know, side passes before we got to this point. Just did a couple and then now here I am asking him for the side pass left, which he bobbles a little bit, figuring out. That I want him to side pass left, but really, I mean, he's doing amazing at figuring out these different tasks. So I side pass over to it, I touch my standard, and at this point, I'm not trying to pick anything up, we're not doing any drags or anything. I just want him to understand the concept that he has to get close enough that I can touch it. And he picked that up really, really quickly. He seems to be really smart. It's um, kind of bewildering to me that they weren't able to get him in the racing gate. So for those of you guys that don't know or maybe are new to following, uh, King is an off-the-track thoroughbred, but he didn't race, not because he was too slow, but because they literally could not get him in the racing gate. So they were not able to race him. So he retired from racing uh, because they couldn't do that. And he just seems so smart. And, you know, we're working on these jump standards, and I it just seems kind of crazy to me that he wouldn't go in a racing gate so maybe that'll be something that I have to do with him in the future maybe I can take him to a racetrack and just do it for the fun of it and see if I can get him into the the racing gate um, but uh, anyways I'm super happy that I ended up with him now I'm just going to show you a little bit of some trot work he's doing really really well at starting to take contact now keep in mind I am riding exclusively bitless I'm riding in the fusion halter which is the halter that combines the leather cheek pieces and the side rings with the rope halter. So he's just plodding around bitless there and he's starting to get some pretty nice contact and some pretty nice mo moments, which is really good. And then here's a little look at just trying a different form of a backup. So I was like, oh, there's kind of a narrow gap here between these jump standards and there's the pole that's on the ground. Why not, you know, turn that into a little back through and he did it really, um, really awesome. He's starting to lower his head nicely as I ask him to back up. So he's starting to put in some nice effort there, which is really great and using himself pretty nicely. Overall, he feels very balanced and um, he feels very rhythmic. It feels like there's a lot of power in there, which is pretty exciting. Um, he feels like he could jump pretty big and carry me over some pretty big fences, but he's only three, so we're not going to be pushing him to do anything like that. We're going to keep his training um, pretty pretty basic. And here's a little look at starting to teach him to do some flying lead changes. So I'm using a pole because we all know how well his last video went when I did a flying lead, 
flying lead change attempt with no pull. And then when I add in the pull, you can see he did that beautifully from right to left. Now right to left lead changes, the racehorses usually know pretty well from being at the racetrack. That's what they do on the home stretch to kind of get new, the new leg to get the finishing streak home. So here we are going around on the right canter circle. I practice both going around to the right and then switching over the pole as well, making sure he understands the difference between me asking for the change and us continuing on the circle. So making sure he doesn't assume that each time. And that was going really well. So I'm like, okay, let's try going the other way. And he's like, no, I couldn't possibly switch to a right lead canter. And he has no problem picking up the right lead canter, unlike Alicia who really struggled with the right lead canner in the beginning when she was off the racetrack and who now uh, in one of my videos in Florida I showed you guys how he, she was actually offering tempi changes which was super cool and he's just like nope couldn't possibly switch to a right lead canner and I'm trying hard not to let him do a simple change because I want him to try to change over the pool and we do a couple laps as you guys can see where we had a cross canner and then over the pool he actually continued on the left lead canner which is the counter canner and we do the pull several times and it's like okay this clearly is not working and I'm trying to gauge like how much energy he has he does have a fair bit of energy so I'm like hey we'll try it again and I'm trying a few different things I'm you know going a little faster or I'm going a little more into the corner I'm using more inside rein or I'm using more outside rein I'm using more outside leg trying to figure out if maybe there's a different button that might help him understand and I end up having to do the simple change and just taking him over again at the canner there on the right lead so he understands that's what he's supposed to do so he gets a little scratch a little rest break there to understand that we were supposed to finish on the right lead canner and then I'm like okay we could uh, give this another go <laughs> We'll see how it goes. So we, we grab our little canner here and we're going to come around and get our change. We make our little turn, do the change no problem from right to left, come around. So that's all looking pretty nicely and his rhythm is just so lovely. He's so lopey dopey, just a lovely, lovely horse to ride. We go to the right. This time I tried to ride a little bit more on a diagonal to see if that would help him. Nope, he is not switching from a left to a right while in the canner. He's just like, that's not something I know. We end up going a little wider, kind of running into the fence a little bit there, because when he's counter cantering, he does not have the best balance, which is totally understandable. We make our right lead canner and end up going over the pole again, just to make sure he understands that that's what we were supposed to do there. So he's going to get a little scratch there. So I'm like, all right, we're going to need to do a fair bit more work on that. So now let's take a little look at a few of his jumps, which are pretty entertaining to say the least. So here's our little cross rail, which he goes over pretty good. And then I wanted to try to start teaching him some canter jumps because he's very willing to go over at the trot and just starting to canter those jumps to see if he can start adjusting his strides a little bit. So we're going to come in at the canter. We go over our jump and of course he knocks it. <laughs> he ends up knocking pretty much every single jump that's out here. We come over our little turquoise jump. We do a little canter off of our turquoise jump, knocks the next blue jump. So the trotting, no problem. Cantering, it doesn't really have that all figured out. I'm gonna ask him for another little canter here and we're gonna come around to the diagonal green jump here and nothing's particularly big they're just kind of little verticals uh, just trying to help him understand his striding and not asking for the flying lead changes so I'll break him down into a, a simple change there to help him understand so not combining skills at this point and then coming around and we'll let him have a little scratch and because he's young we're definitely not intending to do a lot of jumping by any means just a few jumps here and there so that way he can build up the skills so he can do maybe some jumps in the freestyle. <laughs> he ends up clobbering that jump entirely. So he just has very little idea of what to do with his feet. Some little jumps are going to help him with adjusting his stride, with building up his muscle a little bit more, and also putting together something cute for a freestyle. I think it's important in a freestyle 
at the makeovers to show a variety of skills. So I'd like to be able to show at least one or two jumps, maybe a gymnastic or something. So because he basically knocked everything over, I was like, let's just focus on this one single jump and cannering it and see if we can canner and end on a good note with him understanding what he's supposed to do. So you can see he actually figures that out pretty nicely. We get a nice straight line coming off that jump. So I'm really happy with that. He's going to earn a cookie for that. And then we're going to do the same thing to the right and that will sum up his jumping because we don't want to jump him to the point of fatiguing his joints too much or um, causing undue strain on him. There he trips over the, the, pole, the pole. I'm like, oh boy, we are going to look back on this video and be like, wow, we came so far. At least we're hoping that that's going to happen in a few months' time. I'm sure it will. He's already super amazing. That floaty, floaty canner is just so lovely. So we head off to our little jump on the right here. And he ends up getting it really nicely. Which means we're going to finish up with uh, that as the end of his little uh, duo there. And then I'm going to leave you guys to stay tuned for our next video. This is Newton. So for those of you guys that don't know who Newton is, he is my other thoroughbred for the 2022 makeover. This is Sarah who's on him. So Sarah's my co-op student and her and Natalie are partnering together with Newton. And in the next video, I'm going to show you guys his first canter under saddle where he ends up running away.